G'day. In today's video, I've got a Microsoft Surface 2 performance base that's been teared down. I'll just find its model number for you guys, which is written on here somewhere. Um, where are we? Just so we know the exact one I'm talking about. This one's a Microsoft model 1835. And what's going on with this one is that it's currently refusing to, ch to put power through the base to the tablet. Even though the base is still functional, the keyboard and mouse is working, the graphics card is getting detected. So I thought I'd just give it for the hell of it just a tear down. And while I'm here, I might as well replace the thermal paste. So I'll start from the thermal paste and work and then work our way to assembling the device. Uh, nope. It didn't seem like these were T5 screws. Oh, yep. They are T5 screws. Let's zoom you guys in here. So right now we're just dealing with mainly the 1050, I didn't say Ti, but it's not a Ti model. It's just a GTX 1050 in here. And I don't know if this is gonna help it, but I'm going with the assumption of if I do get it going, I know the thermal paste has been replaced. So right now when the tablet is connected, it, the tablet itself can charge perfectly fine with the charging cable. It can also charge fine with, or just the charger cable going straight to the screen. If I plug the base into it, it will utilize the battery of the screen and it won't charge the, as I do that, I probably didn't need to remove that fan. Let's see. Wiggle it slightly. See if it have a lift up. No, the fan removal was not necessary. As you can see, we do have a fair bit of adhesive going around. There goes my air compressor. And what kind of adhesive is this? Uh, so it's kind of rubbery at this point in time. So looking at the die, you could almost replace this with probably liquid metal if you're really confident. But I'm just going to settle for some Arctic, Arctic silver. It's nice to see that this isn't completely dry and powdery, considering it is a few years old. So this probably wouldn't yield too much of a performance increase. I did clean out the fans before with an air compressor. They weren't that dusty considering the style of device that this is. And let's spray some isopropyl alcohol on here and go over it with a toothbrush. So yeah, the device, it doesn't seem to pass through power. So I can get it to say it's charging and it's happy, but it doesn't actually charge. And back again, sorry about that. Do have a S10 just heating up to replace the screen on that one. But while I'm working, right now, give that a quick clean over once more on the die. There we go, looking good. And I'm just gonna use some Arctic Silver 5 on here. You can see just the texture of that, a lot more tacky. Should hopefully mean it has a better thermal transfer than what was already there. Okay, put the cap back on. Now I need to take these bits off here. And turned out I didn't need to unscrew that one there, but that is fine. Line it up. Push. And 
let's put those screws back in. Ooh, nearly lost him. I'm gonna switch to a different screwdriver. So they are, I do, well, I'm almost certain they are T5s. But that is a worn T5. No. That T5's not going in. We are T4. Now we'll just do them by hand to begin with. Another little thing I do want to do while I've got the board out here is I want to just bend down 12 pins. At least the 12 that I can access. So being the charger is reversible. I'm just not certain how well those pins are making contact. So I'm hoping that my non-charge issue may be just the pins, not all of them are making perfect contact, that's the issue. It's a bit unlikely, but I'm happy to try it. Now we'll put the screw back down. One. Two. There we go. Now I'll put these back over the top. They may fall off while I move it, but happy to risk that. Now like a little gasket just to make sure the air is blowing out the right way on these. Come on. It's being a bit stubborn. Not sure why that is. I think it just loosely sits there. I'll do the one over here as well. There, push, push. There. There we go. Now we're on. Now what I'm wanting to do, it's a very thin Phillips head, is to bend in one. Let's bend it out slightly. Two. Three. Do the same over here. One, two, and three. And I'm just checking out the connection itself. Won't bother trying to get you guys in focus. And now I'm just going to go try the connection, just make sure it will click in. So that snaps back into position quite well. Next up, now I've already given this a bit of a clean. So this here is the two USB ports, which is removable. So it has this little flex connector here, or connects to here. So now it's a matter of getting this back into there. And by there, I mean this. I need to fold these ones up. Need these two over the top. Yeah, 
Yeah, I feel like those rub rubber feet are stopping me from sliding. I do also have this to get out of the way. Now I should just be able to go over to the right. Oh, my left. There we go. Slid over. Bingo. So that's now in its correct positioning. So from here, I should be able to reconnect the various connectors. So what have we got here? This one looks to be for the keyboard, just here. And that would be for the backlight, I would assume, of the keyboard. Ah, sorry, no, that's for the trackpad. I better move you guys up. There we go. Trackpad, keyboard backlight, keyboard. Slide that into position, latch down. Same scenario over here. These cables do have a little bit of wiggle room, so if your board's not in the correct spot by a few mil, you should still be able to put these in and do them. Go in and down. There we go. And these connectors here. So these slide in like a standard video cable for a Laptop computer or an LV, LV SD connector. One side's proven to be more stubborn than the other. And down here, there we go. wiggle it over slightly and pull in. Made good connection. Now it's a matter of putting the various screws back into position. So coming off this daughter board over here on the right hand side, so he kind of lives in here. We do also have a full size SD card reader that comes off there. So for the sake of my testing, I'm just gonna ignore these two for now. But do note there is also a metal bracket which goes here. Actually, my mistake, i way around. So that's just to keep the USBs from pulling back when you plug them in. Now, I do have my orientation of this completely thrown out. I'm pretty sure I need to go that away for me. So it will be slightly confusing. And I'm pretty sure that these are mostly T5s. And my magnetized screwdriver is being no good. I'll try the T4 magnetized head. Correction, they are T4s. So now it's a matter of going through all of this and screwing them in. The vast majority of the screws are the longer T4 screws. And it's just a matter of just getting them all back in there. There is some screws that are slightly different. So one, one thing you can always try is just tighten them up, or not fully tightened, just so you can slide around the board if you need to, just to make sure everything is in alignment. Screws over here too. Now I have done this video with the assumption that you have already opened the bottom of this. 
which I found with just heat and isopropyl. It wasn't much of a challenge to get in. I can see how, well, it was a little bit of a challenge. I can see how I fix it gave it such a low rating. As it did, the adhesive that they used was quite strong, but a bit of experience on it, it's not too bad. But I can definitely see our first first time repair or people attempting to repair can have dramas. covers here that just, just loosely sit there on both sides so just little ducks I like the idea behind them yeah, what else have we got here yeah, it looks like we should have a screw there but there is nothing there to screw into at this point in time it looks like Looks like I've used most of the screws I can. So now I'll be finding those little stumpy screws I had before. Where are they? One here. It's a little baby screw, and that's to hold this bracket in over here. Turns out I didn't need to remove it. Actually, if it wants to line up. There we go, now it's going in. And I should hopefully have another one of those here somewhere. That looks like it. Go. So as I said, that's just to lock these in, top down, like that. And we'll disconnect this, take that off, put it back, and actually we'll screw it into position, but I'm going to leave that flex cable disconnected, as I do want to try out this without the USB ports to see if that may fix the non-charging issue that I'm receiving. And of course with repairs you always seem to come up with leftover screws that don't really have an origin. I call it weight reduction some of the time. It's pretty rare that that happens, but it is a possible occurrence. There may be screws under here. There's also one that looks like it should go there. I'm not sure why that is not the case. There's also two more screws that go over the left-hand side here, which I would say one, two, three, three screws left over. I'd say two of them would be here and Maybe a third, just hiding somewhere, potentially right here, actually, now that I look at it. Ah, everywhere's got a place. There we go. So next up would be reconnecting this one and installing that one. And from there, you should have been able to change the thermal paste on your Microsoft Surface performance base, or surface book performance base. I'll be back in just one second, I'm gonna go give this a quick test. So right now, still no decent charge. So I think I'm about done with this one. As with or without the battery connected, it doesn't influence the charging at all. So I'll disconnect that. So I will put the last final bits back in and seal it up from here. That will connect. So 
connect it to here. And that will click in. This will click in also. I do make a nice, decent snap noise. Yeah, connected. Connected also. And now I can put this one back in. Connected. And screw that back into position. One. And if you were following this purely just to disassemble to replace your thermal paste, essentially, or actually, sorry, I'm just only doing the assembly in this one, but from here you'd replace the adhesive around the outer frame and also on the back here. And from there, it should be mostly all right. Just to reconnect the battery and stick it down. So reconnecting the battery. Uh, which orientation is just going to go that way once I flip it back. So connect it to here. And this one here. Now, from my sm small bit of experience with this, this bit here seems to be for charge. I'm not sure if it's charging the batteries, but this here is for sensing the battery is connected. So with this one disconnected, it knows that there's no battery connected in the tablet. So I don't know if that little bit of information may or may not help you. Plug that in there, there, there. This over the top. There. And this should hopefully be able to close for me. Yep, that is the correct orientation. It's all happy. Push it back down. 